Hi, everyone, and uh, welcome to our first in a series of three. So today we'll be doing an introduction to Forex markets. Uh, session one, introduction to Forex markets. Session two, how to trade Forex. And then session three, we'll be doing the educated trader. So before we get started today, have a read of this. This is just our compliance disclosure statement. So just make sure you, uh, you have a good read of that. I'll give you a couple of minutes, um, but just make sure that you understand that everything in the presentation is general in nature. So uh, everything we talk about today, uh, it's not taking into account your individual circumstances. So just make sure you have a read of that and you're aware of that. Okay, so today joining me will be Ron from the Trading Coach International. How are you going today, Ron? Good, thanks, Nick. Good to get on the call with you. Thank you. And uh, obviously, my name is Nicholas uh, Nicholson. I'm the Senior Account Manager here at Think Markets. Uh, so I help the clients out, and uh, I'm sure I've talked to many of you before. Uh, and Ron, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? So I'm the Lead Trading Coach at the Trading Coach International. Uh, we are based in Melbourne, but we work with traders from around the world helping them build a an income from their trading and better understand how to trade the Forex market specifically. Yep, excellent. And uh, you've got your own little disclosure statement down there. Um, I think you've had, everyone's had enough time to read that, but um, yeah, very similar to mine. Just make sure that you, uh, you understand that everything given in the talk today is general in nature. So moving on today, we'll be talking about an introduction to Forex. So we're just gonna give a general overview of Forex today. Uh, we're not gonna go into the weeds too much, so what will we discuss? What is Forex? What influences the Forex markets? Success and failure, Forex trading, and the trading plan. So as I mentioned earlier, we'll just be going through a real sort of overview of Forex, but these are the topics we'll be covering. So the first thing, what is Forex? So it's the exchange of one currency for another via the exchange rate. Now, what is an exchange rate? Well, you could probably define it as a bid and offer, really. Uh, you might have bid and offers in other markets. Forex is a little bit different because you're converting one currency to another and it's a much more liquid market. It's a lot more 24 hour market. Uh, it represents the term currency and that can be purchased with one unit of the base currency. So when I'm talking about a term currency and a base currency, the base currency is the first number you'll see. So you might see AUD, USD. Uh, the AUD is the base currency, and then the term currency is the US dollar. Uh, and it's also defined by the numbers you'll see there. I've got a little crude uh, picture there, um, but yeah, that's sort of how it works and what it might look like when you're trading it. And one of the reasons we like trading Forex is deep and liquid markets. So what do I mean by that? Well, a liquid market is where you have a lot of buyers and sellers. So it's very easy to get access to the market. Um, you, any given time, you can really make a trade and you're not going to have too much, uh, you're not going to have too much trouble having someone find, you know, find the other side of that trade. So Forex is very good for that. And like I already mentioned, 24 hours uh, and five days a week. So yeah, it makes it a very good thing to trade. Uh, Ron, what do you think about the Forex? Well, I've been trading primarily Forex since uh 2000 and goodness, 2004 uh, was when I first started trading Forex, so about 19 years now. I had traded other commodities, and but settled on the Forex market, like you said, because of the deep and liquid markets. It's also very much a uh, an institution-driven market as well. So there's a lot of stability. There's a lot of predictability in the marketplace as well. It's grown rapidly since I started trading. When I first started trading, it was about 1.4 trillion US per day. And now it's up to, I think the last count was about $7.2, $7.3 trillion. So it's a massively growing market. It represents about 25 the times the size of the US equities market combined. So that gives us a lot of opportunities. And we'll look at obviously the different uh, strengths and, uh, and some challenges of trading the Forex market. It is different than trading some other commodities. So it's good to sort of get a bit of a, this general understanding about where the strengths are so you can better evaluate whether it's the right option for you or not to add into your your trading portfolio. Yeah, and it's a good point. Like a lot of people wouldn't really understand uh, that it is such a big market and think that equities is is sort of the biggest thing around. But it, it is, like you point out, it is a much bigger market. And uh, yeah, it does have a lot of opportunities and a lot of different uh, niches to trade in. So yeah, looking forward to getting your thoughts on it today. Now, what influences the Forex market? So we just actually listed a few here. These are just examples. There's an absolute plethora of different things that affects Forex markets. 
Um, we've got down there in the macro environment. So that encompasses all four of these, um, but just as a couple of examples. So we've got GDP. Now you might see this on your Forex calendar and wonder what it is, but this is obviously a, uh, a big mover for the Forex market, a uh, gross domestic product. It's a good indicator of how the country is going and therefore the currency. Uh, so it is something that traders watch and it's also something to watch out for more importantly. So always good to have an awareness of uh, where that one is on your calendar. Interest rates. Now, this is something that you've probably seen in the news a lot lately. We're obviously in a very big hiking cycle. Uh, so the world's interest rates have been changing. Um, this does have a, a big market effect on uh, on Forex and currencies. So very much uh, one to keep an eye on. Now, in the very same vein to GDP, employment, unemployment, uh, these are really big for, for all financial markets really revolving around, uh, I'd say, the country and the currency you're trading. Um, so... Yeah, another, another indicator of health of how the economy in any given uh, environment's going. And then with a trade deficit and surplus. So just another real uh, macro thing to watch uh, in regards to how it can affect your positions uh, and the currencies you're trading. And as I mentioned, the macro environment, Ron, you might want to elaborate a bit further on this, but yeah, it, it can cover a lot of different things. You know, there's a lot of things that affect Forex trading. Uh, what are some of the things that you look out for? So we're always aware on, on a daily basis what upcoming announcements are happening in the different time zones around the world and how they may affect the different currencies. We call these the fundamentals. So there are fundamental analysts who trade basically execute trades based upon the strength of one particular country's currency against the other. And they look at things like you said, GDP, interest rates, employment. They also might look at things like the availability of oil or manufacturing orders as well. They usually they occur in an announcement uh, on the trading session scheduled during the same time that the main country is actually trading the market, so during business hours. So if you're trading, for example, the London Open, you're more likely to find announcements that affect the fundamental value of the GBP compared to the USD or to the Euro. So you'll see things like the um, the high, they call high street numbers as well, the clearing numbers, how many mortgages are being written, the unemployment rate or the improvement in manufacturing requirements as well, uh, the transfer of, of funds from one country to another, but also um, the the purchasing orders for other products that go into manufacturing. And they're a really good indicator of the stability and of the growth of a particular country's currency. So a lot of the fundamental traders that work for financial institutions will make the market move based upon these. So when we're looking at the market as technical traders, looking at analyzing indicators, we're really being driven by what the fundamental analysts are doing in relation to these certain factors. So they'll start to make the market move. In, in making the market move, we start to see how they respond, where they're driving price in the upcoming trading session. Then we look for levels of comfort where we can find our entry points and exit points to follow these as well. Um, some traders trade announcements. Other traders who may be a little bit more risk adverse may wait for the announcement to com complete and see the, the initial price movement after the, the the fundamental analysts have driven the market and then they'll start driving the market from there. I'm more of the one that will wait for the fundamental analysts to start moving the market, find out from where, where they're likely to drive price from where to where. And then that's where I generally find my trades. Yeah. Yeah. Good points. And, and I suppose we should probably um, iterate that one of the reasons those, you mentioned those clients who do, uh, they either trade during the event or they wait. Uh, there is a, a lot less liquidity during these sorts of events, isn't there? So uh, it, it kind of depends on what your risk profile is, I suppose. Absolutely. And we also find that the cost of entry can also blow out depending on the um, the the type of announcement and how uh, how high impact it is as well. That can that can affect the value of the pip spread. And some traders may be basing their entry requirements based upon that as a factor as well. So always be aware of when you're looking at entering a trade. Be aware that your your are you around an announcement time? Is it likely to have a major impact? Does it align with your your trading plan and your your goals with uh, trading for that session? And then take the appropriate action. Yeah. No, yeah, totally a good point there. And um, yeah, I think um, I think it's also really important to make sure you have all this logged in your calendar. So here at Think Markets, we do have a, a calendar. Um, you can, I think it's it's rated from high, medium. Um, so you can actually see what events affect your your various trades. And um, yeah, you can you can map out the week pretty easily. So always important uh, to have that 
sort of set up really do you have a process there ron like do you set that up early in your week or how do you, yeah, exactly. how do you go about it we do a top-down analysis at the start of every trading session, looking at the fundamental factors that may be affecting. Because some of these factors are, are done on a quarterly basis. Some of these announcements on a monthly basis. Some yeah. uh, people will just respond to particular if, for example, the Federal Reserve Chair speaks as well. All of these things on the calendars, they're generally planned for the next couple of months in advance. At the start of the trading month, depending on your your the way that you're, you're trading with, you're going to be trading position trades for long-term swing tradings for shorter-term day traders or intraday trading, then you might want to just consider what which currency pairs may have the strongest price movements. Uh, if they are if they're following a particular trend as far as what you would follow to get into to find whether the market's going long or going short, and then look at these announcements as to whether they're likely to give you stronger entry points or whether you may be looking at to avoid and waiting to see what happens from there. It's the thing with reading announcements, especially for retail traders, is that most retail traders generally find that technical analysis is a stronger option for them for the most part because when you look at these fundamental announcements, a lot of time financial institutions have already just found that information. They've paid for a lot of information to come through through reports and analysts to look at where these results may be and where that may drive price. So they already may have this may they already may have this predetermined idea about where price might go. So it the thing with fundamental factors is that it's not necessarily about the result. It's about how the fundamental analyst will actually respond to that result. We may see what we consider a positive impact for a country, but if they were expecting an even stronger positive impact or stronger positive result, and the result isn't as good as they expected it to be, that could cause price to go in other directions that you may not expect. So yeah. Fundamental anal analysis is generally good for those people who have lots of money and lots of access to information. Uh, be aware of them, though, but uh, depending on whether you're trading fundamentals or technicals, they still have a part to play. Always be aware of what's coming up in the upcoming trading sessions, especially. Yeah, yeah, and I can certainly attest to, you know, the odd, um, the odd market beat where it doesn't quite do what you expected it to do and vice versa. So uh, some, good, some good advice there, I think. Uh, so... You want to just quickly take us through uh, these ones, Ron. So success and failure, systematic processes, realistic expectations, objective market analysis, and a business approach to your trading. Yeah, so looking at how traders trade and the success relative to um, what they're putting into their trading, what we've really found is over my last 19 years of trading and 16 years of coaching, there's really, these are the four keys that would cause somebody to not get the result that they're looking for long-term with their trading. Um, so systematic processes. The strength of a system can't be understated when you're looking at producing a consistent result. Uh, consistent profit is, is the goal, I believe, for most traders that are looking to earn an income from this, being able to look at the market have a trading method, have a process in place that you can not guarantee necessarily, nobody can guarantee, but gives you the highest probability of getting the outcome that you're looking for. And that's really built on processes. Uh, going into a lot of people that get started in trading, unfortunately, uh, they, they approach it from a hobby perspective. Uh, and that's a good thing as far as like you have an interest in trading, then by all means pursue it. But also consider that hobbies are designed to take your money, whereas businesses are designed to make you money. Uh, the system the system that you have in place, regardless of whether it's a system that you've created yourself or you're using a system that somebody else has put in place, make sure that it aligns with the outcomes that you're looking to do. Uh, if you're looking to earn a, an income from trading, first be aware of like what does that income look like and what would the processes look like to actually build that type of income. Most people don't have enough of a process in place. They cobble together a few ideas and a few strategies here, a few indicators here and there, but doesn't necessarily give them the logical outcome to get that result that they're looking for. Realistic expectations. I'm sure a lot of people have seen those videos on YouTube of the guy standing in front of the fancy cars, the Lamborghinis and the, the mansions and the yachts and so forth and think that that's what trading looks like for most people. And it really just isn't. For most people that we work with, especially coming into trading, either having a background in trading or not having any experience previously, what most people are looking to do is building an income stream from trading as part of building an investment portfolio. 
Uh, depending on, on what their goals and what their expectations are, that could be a couple of hundred dollars a week to a couple of thousand dollars a week to ten to fifteen thousand dollars a week, depending on what they're looking for. But in anything, in all of this, it's about starting a business. Uh, and if you consider that you've got to go through a period where you, you're not going to be earning an income, you're going to be learning about what the most important aspect of getting into a trade is, how to manage a trade, how to exit a trade with profit, or how to minimize risk, then how to repeat this process. That can take anybody from one year to two years to five years to 10 years, depending on the support that they get, depending on the processes that they follow, and depending on how much time, effort, and energy they're putting into their trading. Have a realistic expectation. The most that anybody probably in as a retail trader can expect is if you're looking to replace your full-time income, for the most part, that's generally something that can be achieved over a period of time, but it's not going to happen overnight. You need to actually put time, effort, and energy into it and then get that support to help you better understand where you are in relation to your goals and what you need to do to, to help complete that. Objective market analysis. So when we're looking at the market, as Nick's already said, there's a lot of factors to consider. Um, there's the factors of, of the economic stability of the particular market. There's the factors of who's actually trading in the market at the moment. Your strategy may be a long-term position trading where you're looking to get into a trade and holding the position for weeks, months, possibly even years, depending on what the outcomes you're looking at. It may be shorter term. You might be looking to trade the swings in between the price cycles on these major market movements over a period of time and looking to in, enter and exit trades in over days to weeks. Or you may be looking at an, the best op opportunity to get into a trade at the start of a trading session to the end of the trading session, making profit in that time or during the meantime there. In analyzing the market, what you're looking for is realistic, real data that the market is giving you about what the, the the strength, the value of the market is, that particular currency in relation to the other currency in the pair, the base and the other currency in the pair, as well as uh, what that means about who's driving the market and where they're driving it to. Traders can operate, operate from a perspective of what we call biases, where you're looking for a long trade, so you're trying to find a long trade or you're looking for a short market, so you're trying to find the short market. Objective, mar ob objective market analysis is just about really taking that back seat, taking yourself out of the equation as somebody who has no influence over where the market goes and gathering the data so that you can make the best decisions about where your trades will be. And that really ties, all that ties into that business approach where if you're looking to build this as a business, most businesses, the, the statistics are that most businesses in Australia fail in the first 12 months and then even more fail over the next two years and then over the next five years. And the reality in trading is that overall, when we look at retail traders, about 95 to 97% of people are trading after about 10 years and earning a profit, consistently making money. So therefore about, um, so did I say 90%? 10% of people actually making consistent 10%. profit over that. So, yeah, that's a bit better. <laughs> so, yeah, so over, so when we look at the the real reality of, of the market, only about 10% of traders are making a profit in the marketplace. Um, Forex is probably about on par with most other equities markets, but about 90% of people just don't make any money. They quit, they give up, they lose their money, and that's, that doesn't do anybody any good. So when you when you approach your trading, if you consider it as a startup business where you're looking at gaining the knowledge, building your skills, optimizing your processes, and then building profitability as a function of all those first three things. That's what really gives us a long, cons sustainable, consistent profit in Forex is that business-like approach. Uh, keeping yourself uh, uh, taking every every transaction, every trade that you do is a business transaction. Would you do this in business? No, then you shouldn't do it in your trading. Would you be emotional about a, about a, a business transaction? Probably not. So therefore, try to keep emotion out of the out of your trading transactions as well. Um, so yeah. having a business like approach to to your trading. Yeah. So analytical. You know, stay. Try and keep you cool. Don't get too emotional about it. Review everything. Uh, you know, with that objective lens. And like you mentioned too, probably an important thing I should mention, you know, doing your homework before you, you get started, you really need to have a good understanding, uh, which is what these presentations are all about, really just helping people get started. And you re we really encourage that, I think, markets to do your homework, really 
learn the product, learn the market before you even think about starting. Um, and I, Warren Buffett, Warren Buffett said that don't invest in anything unless you understand it. The first before the first trade you take, you should be considering like where what the system looks like, what the process looks like, how would you execute it, what support do you have, both from your broker or from a, either a coach or a business partner or something like that, uh, and and have that in place before you take your first trade. Never practice on the market with real money. Um, the great thing about, about Think Markets is they've got a really functional uh, uh, demo trading platform. Uh, and that, that should be the first thing. Once you understand, once you have a trading method that works, that you know is actually proven to work, practice it. Practice it in the demo environment where you can understand how that applies in the real world without having to risk any real money. Yeah, and you, you can find the demo account pretty easily. We'll uh, we'll show you some links at the end to our website. Um, but yeah, just moving on, sort of to, to sort of just give a bit more of an overview uh, of the forex trading market. So hedging and speculating. Um, one thing we have mentioned uh, a little bit is uh, the macro environment. Hedging and speculating they're a little bit polar opposite. In fact, so hedging is where you're actually protecting an existing position. You're taking a not necessarily the opposite, but uh, a little bit of a different, um, uh, a little bit of a different polar position, uh, and it's actually there to protect your current position. Speculating is the opposite, so this is probably a more common uh, thing we'll see in retail trading, where you're actually speculating on what the market is going to do, where you're looking to make a profit by taking advantage of a price movement, basically. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, forex trading got no centralized market, so it's traded via brokers. Uh, that's why it's a 24-hour market, five days a week. It facilitates the flow of capital around the world. Uh, it's also uh, driven by institutional traders. So what we mean by institutional traders, uh, we're not really the big dogs, are we, Ron? We're, we're sort of the small fries. Uh, we're kind of at the whim of the market in that sense. And it is driven by uh, not only just big institutional uh, traders like banks, but also even um, central, uh, central banks, reserve banks, and uh, yeah, big institutions around the world. Absolutely. So there's hedge funds are also included in there, banks, financial institutions, superannuation funds. Uh, if you're in a superannuation fund, you may already find that your some of your funds in your superannuation are already being traded on the Forex market, just being traded by the people who work for the for the superannuation fund companies. Um, banks uh, are probably the biggest. I think 88% of the Forex market trades are executed by about 10 major banks across the world. So they make up a large proportion of the money that goes into the market. But even on a smaller scale, most banks, anywhere from 25 to 40%, I think the latest figure is, is um, of their profit on a yearly basis is generated by Forex trading. So that's yeah. money that, that they're trading from their reserves uh, to produce that those, those um, profits for the bank and for bank shareholders. And one thing you mentioned as well, it's a 24-hour day, five-day-a-week market so we get saturdays and sundays off which is great for families do you think that will um, and, last forever or do you think we're, we're heading to a 24 7 uh, i don't know i mean the, there's a lot that happens on the weekends that that's done outside of market movement so when for example when you look at the major movements you might see price move on the forex market on a currency pair dramatically over the weekend when the market's not available to trade by institutional or even retail traders that's usually when banks and uh well, so reserve banks for countries are shifting funds from one country to another, paying for things like purchases uh, made from one co one government to another government or shifting um, aid and so forth. Funds happen on the weekends. They usually do that to keep it outside the market influence so that they can get the, the, the determined value, what they want to send over. They can get that fixed amount transferred from one country to another. It's also so that the market doesn't spike or that other uh, institutional traders don't have some sort of don't use these price movements to to drive price in a, in a direction contrary to where the pressure usually is. Um, yeah. I think that it's more lucky at the moment to stay 24-5, but that may change um, once with the, they start looking at implementing the central bank digital currencies. Mm -hmm. um, it may start to move outside of those ranges. Uh, this depends. CBDCs is something that's really interesting coming up over the next couple of years. A lot of uh, countries are working on their central bank digital currencies. Uh, and that may have an influence on how we trade. Um, my personal belief is I feel like it might be absorbed into the current marketplace. I don't know if they'd set up anything else. It kind of works 
similar to a cryptocurrency, but because it's backed by a government, it'll have some of those fundamental values behind it. I feel like it's more likely to work in with existing uh, systems and processes that banks and financial institutions are used to and that they already have systems in place for. So, yeah, we'll talk about the trading plan now, Ron, and obviously uh, this is this is more sort of your area of expertise, so I'll let you go through it, but you've got some uh, points there. Yeah, definitely. So, um, as I mentioned before, having a trading plan that works for you, that's aligned with the outcomes that you want to produce is really important when you're looking at building an income from any form of trading, especially in Forex trading. So in Forex trading, as we mentioned, the Forex market works a little bit differently than most commodities market. So expect it's going to be a little bit of a, a, a process in actually learning how the market works. Like I was saying before, Warren Buffett, um, arguably one of the best investors in the, on the world, in the world, is uh, said that don't invest in anything unless you understand it. So trading the Forex market, invest some time in understanding how the market works. Have a process in place where you actually start off your trading with education, then move to skill development, understand how the market moves, then how do you implement a trading strategy? How do you optimize it to get your best results? Then at that point, that's when you can expect to start to make profit from it. So understanding how the market works is first and foremost. Uh, Invest in your education in that first. Use a strong, consistently profitable end-to-end -end trading method. So the method you use to trade should help you analyze the market to find the strongest opportunities, help you enter the trade to find the strongest point to get into a trade where you're more likely to make profit from that point. Usually in the shortest period of time possible is usually pretty good too. How do you manage the trade through challenges, maybe some short-term retracements or sideways movement to get to the outcome you're looking for? how to get out of the trade with profit or at least minimize your loss. How do you consolidate from that and then move into the next trade in your trade sample? Because remember, a fortune or money isn't made one trade on one trade. It's multiple trade after trade after trade, building that as you go. So consistently profitable end-to-end -end trading methods are really important. Um, you want to be using risk management strategies. We call them active and passive risk management strategies that are all about how do you minimize the potential loss. As an example, part of your risk management strategy may involve stop losses. It may involve your position size. It may involve the times of days that you trade, the market conditions you trade, the currency pairs that you trade, and really how do you process, how do you go through the process on a daily basis? So locking your profits and minimize losses. Um, the trade when the institutional traders are moving the market, institutional traders work for banks and financial institutions. For the most part, they work nine to five like any other employee. If you're trading the GBP USD, then the institutional traders, usually they're based in London and New York, are the ones that are going to drive the market the most. So in those times, the strongest currency price movements usually happen when institutional traders are driving the market. That's when you'll generally also find your strongest trade entries where you can lock in the best profit. Major currency pairs have most market news and data available online. So talking before about how you can go onto some of the news sites and see what announcements are coming up, but also some long-term strategies. Like there's lots of analysts out there that give a lot of information about the overall long-term performance of a particular currency pair. And so all that market data that you've got is it's ammunition, it's, it's information that you can use to help make intelligent decisions about your trades. Um, the have a good broker that provides the charts and access that you need to take the trades that you're looking for. And that's what I love about Think Markets is that the trading platform is absolutely brilliant. Uh, the the Think Trader platform is the one that we use the most. Uh, personally, it's one I use the most. Uh, and it has the timeframes, the tools, the indicators, all the all everything that I need to get that information that data, analyze it and find a strong entry point, lock in profit. There's good, um, the, the pip spreads are really good. The If you're looking at the um, the availability of data, the access to data is top notch. Uh, the support that you get from the broker is really important as well. You want to have a broker that is there when you need them. Um, I know that a couple of our traders have had issues with some of their trades where maybe they lost data and they're able to contact one of the customer service people at Think Markets and who has helped them manage their trade or monitor their trade while they're getting their system back in place and they're in a better position to exit their trade. Um, learn from your negative trades. Your negative trades will generally provide your biggest lessons. How you do things from trade to trade to trade 
if you analyze, take the time to analyze your trades, you can start to see where there's commonalities between your positive trades and your negative trades. Your negative trades can help you better identify a knowledge gap or a mindset gap, a structural gap, a procedural gap, or just I shouldn't be on the market at the moment because I'm too distracted. Trading success is 100% method and 100% mindset. There's a saying in trading that it's 80% mindset, 20% method. That's absolutely incorrect. It's 100% method and 100% mindset. You can have a great method, but a bad mindset, you won't make any money. You can have a great mindset, but a bad method, you won't make any money. You need to have that balance effect where you have a great trading method that helps you better manage your mindset and then work on some of those mindset things as well. There's great books out there written by really great uh, good authors on how to manage your mindset in trading. We work a lot on mindset in our program, Left Investor Trader as well. Uh, plan your progress based upon your actual results, not on fear or greed. So you're looking at building these positive results, trade after trade after trade. Like I said before, you don't make a fortune on one trade. You, you're looking for the strongest opportunity to find the, the highest probability of getting your profitable trades and then build upon that. Only start to increase your investment based upon proven results that you've generated. Don't think that I'm, I can do this. I can I can be make a million dollars. I'll put I'll mortgage the house. I'll max out my credit cards. That's not what you would do. What any business would do in order to build a business. Build a business based upon growth, consistent growth, and then work on work forward from that. Find a supportive coach or community to keep you on track, whether that's uh, within a specific program or looking at websites or communities, Facebook communities. Find something that works for you. Find You'll know that when you go into one of these communities that the vibe, the vibe suits you or not. Um, be aware of some of the, the, the programs or the, the, the groups out there where there's a lot of infighting. Try to keep out of those sort of environments. Have something that's supportive. If you can't find a supportive one, keep looking. Uh, and I think they're probably the, the key things that I recommend to anybody who starts taking either Forex trading or any other type of trading. These are the things that really help you get in the better position to be successful in this. Uh, and if you leave some of these things out, then you might find it might be harder. It might put a lot of stress and pressure on other things as well. But this is just for, for me, my top tips on how to actually trade the market, regardless of the trading method that you use, regardless of the person that is your coach or the, the community that you're in. If you follow these rules or these guidelines, then you, you're pretty much giving yourself the best opportunity to get the best result. Yeah, no, some really good points there. And um, yeah, look, we've, we haven't really got much time left today, but we, as I mentioned earlier, we'll get a bit more into the weeds, I think, with some of the, you know, the trading plan. And um, yeah, there's some pretty good points there to get you started and, and really get you thinking about, you know, how you want to approach your, your trading. Uh, so just in light of that, um, obviously, Today was an introduction of Forex markets. Um, we will be doing uh, session two, uh, and that will be how to trade Forex. Uh, and then session three, Ron will uh, will go through the educated trader presentation. Uh, now, if you have uh, found any of this interesting or you want to find out more, you can find us here at Think Markets. So we've got our website there. You can email through to support at thinkmarkets.com, phone number and uh, QR code. Ron, how about yourself? Where can we find more about you? Yes, yeah, certainly. If you'd like to know about more, learn more about what we do with the Trading Coach, our Lift Investor Trader program, you can just visit us at thetradingcoach.com.au or Google the Trading Coach International. Uh, on the website, you'll find a bit more information about what we do, our philosophy with trading, our programs that we run. Uh, and then also, like if you wanted to book a strategy call, you can always click on the book the call button uh, and then you'll have a chat with me directly. Uh, and then we'll just have a discussion about where you are with your trading what you want to achieve and give you some ideas about what you could potentially do next as your next step. Perfect. Well, thanks so much for joining us today, Ron. Uh, just before we go, uh, we'll just take you through a, a final disclosure. Obviously, everything we've mentioned today is just general in nature. Uh, leverage trading can result in losses and just have a read of that and make sure you fully understand the risks associated and seek independent device, advice if necessary. Uh, but have a read through that. We'll just leave that up for you. Once again, Ron, pleasure having you with us. And uh, yeah, we'll talk to you in the next session. Talk to you then. Thanks, Nick.